Now, over the last few days, we have seen in this country what can only amount to a tragic comedy of errors. And it all would have been very funny if only it wasn't so ridiculous. First, a group of 11 Kenyan members of parliament sneak out of the country into Somalia, where they reportedly meet the president of that country to supposedly discuss about the Al-Shabaab threat in northeastern Kenya. They have no clearance, as is the requirement, and they have not even notified the Speaker of the National Assembly. They insist it was an informal trip, yet they met the president no less of this neighboring country. And by some accounts, which they have since denied, they even met the country's intelligence chief. A day later, a vicious gun battle ensues in Mandera town itself. Several people are injured and vehicles destroyed on the Kenyan side of the border. The police inspector general issues a statement denying any kind of problem on the Kenyan side, insisting the drama was confined to Bulahawa, the Somali town across the border from Mandera. Then just yesterday, a tough warning from President Uhuru Kenyatta asking Somalia to cease and desist from what he called unwarranted provocations. Now, the statement which came after a special session of the National Security Council acknowledged that what had happened in Mandera was indeed an attack on, get this, Kenya's territorial integrity and sovereignty by the federal government of Somalia. Now, I will not dwell on the members of parliament. They have given their story and Kenyans can judge for themselves. But I'm more concerned about the government response to this daring attack on Kenya by a neighboring country. First, the denial from the police was both cruel and irresponsible. How could he, from the comfort of his office in Nairobi, dismiss the story of several Kenyans in Mandera who not only heard the loud explosions in the town, but also saw the billowing smoke and the resulting mayhem of injured people and blown out vehicles? The statement from the president after the National Security Council meeting couldn't have been more underwhelming. Here was a special session of the highest security organ in the country comprising not just the president, but also his deputy, the chief of defense forces, the inspector general of the police, the country's intelligence chief. And all they could come up with was a long and winding cease and desist statement, not different from what Nema would give to a rowdy resident making noise in the estate at night or a factory discharging effluent into a river. This was a serious breach by a neighboring country. For the first time, we were not talking about Al-Shabaab terrorizing residents of Mandera, but the government of a country, one with a permanent address, a government and a president. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Kenyan jet fighters should have rained bombs on Mogadishu on that day, even if that occasionally becomes necessary. But surely, is that the best Kenya would have done? Is that the best assurance would have given to the people of Mandera that no rogue intruders would come harassing them again? Do we still have diplomatic ties with Somalia? Do they have an ambassador in Nairobi? Where was he on that day? And why do we still have an embassy of Somalia in Nairobi if their president, their president, can not only meet ethnic Somalis, Somali MPs in such an irregular fashion, but then they can actually come into Kenyan territory on the orders of the very president. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now convinced that our neighbors no longer respect us. If Somalia, which is even struggling to put in place a functional government, let alone run their own country, can have the audacity to invade Kenya for whatever reason, what does that say about our standing in the region? But you see, it's not difficult to see why. Are we imagining that the Somali government, as dysfunctional as it is, was not watching when we let Ugandan troops invade Migingo Island and harass Kenyan fishermen, who had for decades plied their trade around that rock in Lake Victoria? What about when the Toposas cross from South Sudan or Merile fighters storm parts of Turkana from Ethiopia and we get nothing except issuing warnings? I think the government should cease and desist from taking all of us for granted. We surely deserve better. That is my angle for this week. Mm -hmm.